A word you would have heard over the span of 2017, maybe more times than you would have liked to, is hard fork. Mostly closely associated with the Bitcoin's endless hard forks shaking up the market, many know it provides so-called free coins, but not many know the purpose and actual steps for this hard fork to take place. To start off with helping you understand, a hard fork is no different to a software update you would get on your phone or computer. It just has to go through a much longer route to activate the upgrade compared to just pressing the upgrade button. This is because it takes more than one party to make this change. So firstly, why is a hard fork needed? It can be for a multitude of reasons such as the memory size of each block, for example one megabyte, is no longer sustainable as the blockchain grows in popularity and size. So it needs increasing. Or a crucial security flaw was found in the original blockchain code. Maybe the blockchain just needs some new functions like an iPhone software update. Or in the worst case, a large amount of funds may have been stolen from a wallet. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean it's always for the greater good, as it has been suspiciously coincidental that occasionally a decision to fork is made for seemingly the smallest of reasons, and in reality the miners just want the free coins that are instantly mined from this process to then dump on the market for a huge profit. So, let's say one of these situations arises, what happens now? Well as you know from the previous lesson, the blockchain is ran and verified by miners, mostly miners running on an extremely large scale in factory sized locations full of graphics cards, working away at these algorithms all day. Essentially, it is these largest players that control the price of the market and how the blockchain runs. To upgrade and create a fork, these miners have to switch from mining and verifying the old blockchain to updating the mining protocol, aka the software they use to mine, and begin mining the new blockchain instead. The switch from upgrading the protocol and mining the new blockchain creates a split from the old original chain. This means all transactions become invalidated if they're being performed by someone still on the old blockchain, as those still running previous protocols will be left validating the old chain. This creates a permanent divergence where those running the previous blockchain can upgrade should they wish, but the new blockchain miners cannot downgrade so a choice is made to continue verifying the outdated chain or join the new chain. The graphic pictured shows this process in its simplest form. The blocks on top are the original blockchain. The blocks on the bottom are the day of the fork. A new upgraded blockchain is formed starting from a new block one. The old blockchain also continues. An example of this is Ethereum Classic, where one of the largest hacks and theft in crypto took place and the founders decided a split was needed to reclaim this payment and then continue mining the new blockchain from that point onwards with its upgraded security measures. This is how Ethereum was born. Many did not agree with this and decided to continue mining the classic blockchain as it stayed true to decentralized, not going back on its principles. As you can imagine, it's not as easy as every huge mining powerhouse getting along, agreeing and all joining the same protocol. This is handled by a vote and a predetermined date when the fork will take place. The vote is public and allows us retail investors to observe this and see how many favour one chain more than the other. They are also not obliged to tell the truth and can very easily vote for the opposite choice to manipulate the market on the day. When the date comes and the system upgrades itself automatically, it's up to the miners to take the steps just before to be prepared for this and adapt to the new protocol. During periods of hard forks taking place, always be extra cautious if it's related to the cryptos you hold. I do not personally recommend trying to time the market and trading the newly mined crypto for a quick profit. It has not ended well for a lot of people. This can bring great investment opportunities however, as the crypto that is expected to fork will usually have a huge price growth during the run up to the split as investors buy as much as they can to receive the free crypto from the fork. But this also means the day after the fork, the price can get very volatile to the downside.